active length nails. How do you do them? Greg's gonna show you not one, but two different ways using Cover Pink Powder right now. Hey guys, in this educational nail video, I'm gonna be showing you how to sculpt two active length nails, but the difference is I'm gonna be sculpting them on some short square nail beds. I'm gonna show you how to customize the forms and put them on, then we're going to create two styles, one being a tapered square and a short almond nail that is going to make your clients super happy. All right, so we're going to push back, replicate pushing back the cuticle area. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our electric file at 3000 RPMs. And what I wanna do is I wanna gently remove the shine from corner to corner, right? So just going to lightly feather away all the shine. I don't have to run my electric file at mock speed. Notice I'm going around the perimeter of the nail, and then as soon as I get to that corner, I'm going to start lightly feathering, right, all the way down to the corner, right, keeping an overgrip position on my client so they're not constantly looking at the finger while I'm trying to prep the nails. Right. So once they're prepped, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use swipe, all right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pump it. I'm just going to clean the surface. Right, and what that's gonna do is gonna pull all the oils and moisture from the surface of the natural nail. If you choose to use a lint-free wipe to kind of cleanse the surface, you could do that. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to be using Protein Bond. This is the last part of preparation. What we're going to do is we're going to use two coats from Cuticle to Free Edge. All right, go through all 10 nails and then apply another coat. All right, once we are done doing that, we have to put a form that's going to fit this style of nail. All right, so this is, some of you guys see this all the time. You got shorter natural nails and you have a really, really square free edge where sometimes the skin is coming up right here on the sides. They're not bitten, but they're short, right? And the regular forms are not gonna fit with ease. So what you wanna do, you wanna take your nail form and this tab right here, what we're going to do is we're going to cut it. All right, so once we cut this, I need to place that onto my form just like this, okay? Just so I have a little bit of a platform to get right underneath that free edge. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-pinch my form. Then what we're going to do is we're going to fit it right underneath. I wanna do the same thing, like right when I have it underneath, tight to the free edge, I'm just gonna rock it back so the form is going to be absolutely straight. What this is going to do, it's going to form that free edge super tight. I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the other finger. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this off. We're going to place that on the finger as well. You can also choose to hold the form just like this, and then as soon as you get that on straight, you're going to be able to hold the side, right? So that it's nice and tight. All right, so what we're going to do, once we have the forms onto the fingers, we're going to build two active length free edges. Active length means like literally half or less the length of the natural nail. All right, so if the natural nail obviously is this long, what we want to be able to do is build something that's going to be about half that length, just about up to here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my nail liquid bottle. I'm going to hold my bottle up to the ferrule. I'm going to dispense the right amount of liquid inside my dish. I'm going to be working with Cover Pink. And what I want to do is I want to build something that is going to be flush to the nail, right? 
So if I pick up a bead by bouncing inside the surface, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna drain that excess. You can see I'm draining it down onto my towel. And then once I place this onto the free edge, you're going to notice that I have like a clay-like consistency, right? I didn't pick up a large bead. I picked up something that's about half that size. Now, those bulges right there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk it from the top and I'm going to get it right to the edge. I'm going to literally walk it from the top and I'm going to get it right to the edge. But you're noticing, right? As I'm walking up to the corner, I'm walking from the top. So I'm creating a really tapered like square nail. Once I have it even from the sides, then I'm going to be using the side of my brush just to kind of bring it in, right? And kind of shorten out that length. Perfect. It doesn't matter if you bring that acrylic up onto the natural nail. All right, so what we wanna be able to do is we wanna, again, we wanna sculpt something that is going to be about half the size of that natural nail. Once we have this nice and even from side to side, all right, then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna continue working down throughout all the nails, right? So I have that built out. What I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to build it on here. So if we're going to be going with more of an almond or oval shape, what I wanna be able to do is I kinda of wanna round it off. Now, to help some of you guys build something that is not too long. What you can do, if you decide that you wanted to pinch the form a little bit more, you can see how I'm going to be able to get a much tighter fit on to that free edge, right? so that everything kind of narrows down to this point. If you don't want it to go past a certain point, pinch it a little bit more, just like this. And what it'll do is it'll force you to work within that limited space. This will make it a lot easier from you overbuilding that tip, right? So, I'm going to submerge my brush, I'm going to bounce, 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 right? Get a smaller bead. I'm going to remove the excess, right? So it turns kind of like a matte finish, as you can see. And then again, just by waiting a couple seconds and then setting it to the very, very tip, notice that the bead is not going to run all over the place. So what I'm going to do is I want to walk it from the top, and notice I'm using the side of my brush kind of taper it in. I'm literally walking to the corner, but I'm keeping that angle right to the point. I wanna do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm walking it from the top, walking it from the top, right? And I wanna try to keep this really nice kind of tapered almond shape beauty, right? Within that parameter of the pinch, right? So you can see how nice and even that's going to be. It's gonna make a huge difference when you guys are actually Going to be building out length for this active shape. All right, so once we have that built out, we're now ready to finish out the body. So, so the beautiful thing about building active length nails is usually you could build the body in one bead. Right, so I'm gonna pick up something big enough so that I could do the overlay. And then again, if I need a blending bead for the upper arch, I'm not gonna need much. One's going to be able to do it in just enough. Okay, so I'm going to hold my finger down, all right? I'm going to, right, create a little bit of space. I'm going to submerse my brush. I'm going to bounce, 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 bounce. I got a big enough bead. Now notice my count. One, two, three, and then at four, I'm going to release, and then immediately with the tip of my brush, I'm going to start walking behind the cuticle area. And then as the product starts to run down towards the side, I'm gonna bring that side down. Look where I pull from that side and from the front of the bead. From the side and from the front of the bead. I'm not pulling from the top. Literally from the side and from the front. And notice how everything runs down towards the tip with even flow. A lot of the support, right? I have enough product where if I just keep brushing out that front end, I'm going to try to get this all the way down to the tip right, so that I don't have to over apply that much at that area. Now, at this point, you're gonna notice how tight everything is back here, how rounded it off, rounded it is down through here as well. The only area where I think I'm going to need just a hair more is right there at the front of the tip. So if you needed to come in for a blending bead, I could literally submerse my brush. I could pick up just a hair more. Again, not much. 
I'm going to lay this down right here at the tip. Notice how small that is, right? And then I'm going to use the body of the brush just to walk it from side to side. And what that's going to do is it's going to fill in the space that I need. I do not want to over apply that tip. I want to be able to keep good balance all the way through, right? Perfect. Once we actually have that filled in, as you can see, I'm done. I just need to wait till this dries so that I can file it into perfection. Okay, now, same with this. Right? We've already built that out. What I wanna be able to do, okay? What I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to submerge my brush. And you can tell like from the surface, right? You can tell some of the tip that I built is it's not flush, but it's up onto the natural nail. That's no problem at all. You just don't want it too thick at that area, right? You want a nice flush extension so that when you do your overlay from cuticle to free edge, it's going to flow into perfection with ease. So let's do the same thing. I'm gonna submerse my brush, right? I'm gonna get this quite swollen. I'm going to bounce, 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 bounce. Not fluffy that pearl is. One, two, three, four. And then right there at that four count, I'm gonna set that down and then I can start using the tip of my brush to walk around the perimeter. As everything starts to flow down, look where I pull, right here from the side and from the front of the bead, from the side and from the front. I wanna just make sure, as you can see, that I don't get everything running down onto the skin. Right, so that, that again, you'll notice that I'm taking the wedge of my brush, I'm just kind of cleaning that edge so it doesn't come down. And then I'm brushing from that corner, from the front, all the way through. And you can see how nice the upper arch starts to shape as I start brushing this all the way to the tip. I don't need to force it. If I don't have enough, I could bring a little bit more. But honestly, I have the right size. This is going to be perfect right for this nice active length oval nail all right so what we're going to do is we're going to wait for that dries and we're going to quickly file these into perfection and you're going to see how easy it is to do these nails all right so i want to pinch the front of the forms before i remove them as you can see that way it releases them from the free edge when I have a brand new file, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to take the edges down from the new file so that I do not cut my client before I start to shape their edges. Now, for the active length square, I'm slightly going to taper it. So my, my file, as you can see from the top, right, is kind of in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to taper that free edge. I'm not going to keep it dead square going to have it at an angle. My lower arch, as you can see, is parallel. My, my, my file is parallel to the finger from the lowest point. I want to be able to file up and into the corner. So if you're looking at it from the side profile, and if you're looking at it from the side profile, I want to start from that lowest point, and I want to be able to file up until my hand file reaches, right, that extension. That way you're going to build perfectly straight lower arches from the end of the growth channel out to the end of the tip. All right, so once we have that shaped, right, then I'm gonna move on to this one. I personally like to go through and do all my sides and get them all tuned up, and then I go through the whole entire surface. That way I don't have to worry about that when I'm done. So for this one, I wanna keep contact with the side all the way through, all the way through. And then once I have my sides shaped all the way through, I'm just gonna round off that tip. And then I wanna be able to do the same thing. I wanna line my file up at the lowest point and file up until it reaches the lower arch. So for you guys looking at it from the top profile, you're gonna notice from this point, I'm keeping it parallel with the finger, turn my client's hand to the side and file up until I get to that right that growth extension right there from the natural all the way out to the side and that way it stays nice and even all right so once we have that shaped out then what i'm going to do is just make sure i'm looking at all the sides to make sure it's absolutely perfect all right all my sides are even all the way through all right i'm going to go ahead and take my electric file i'm going to switch it out to our safety bit all right 
The best part about doing this is I don't really need to file that much, right? So what I wanna be able to do, I'm going to start from the cuticle area, right? And I'm going to file all the way through, looking down the barrel of the nail, I'm filing in one direction to get my C curve nice and even. Always in one direction. All right, and then once I'm done doing my C curve, right, I'm going to walk around, right, walk, I'm gonna run it around the perimeter of the nail in one direction. I'm taking my time. I don't have to put that much pressure. What this is going to do is going to reduce all the bulk, right, from that perimeter. And then once you shape that eye with your electric file, all you have to do is file through the balance in one direction. That is done, right? I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm basically going to look at the side profile. What I wanna be able to do is get my upper arch in all the way through. I'm going to look down the barrel of the nail. I'm gonna file in one direction all the way through to make sure that my C-curve is nice and even. I'm going to go around the perimeter of the nail to reduce the bulk around the cuticle area. Then what I can do is use the bit literally to come from cuticle to free edge in one direction and everything is going to come into perfection. All right, so once you have that bulk removed, then it's just a matter of taking your hand file, blending the perimeter nice and flush, and then I like to follow through just to make sure that we're reducing the balance of the acrylic so that everything is absolutely flawless. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and go through all these nails to make sure they're filed into perfection. Then I'm gonna apply protein bond over the surface. And you're gonna see what it looks like when I'm applying finished gel over the top. We absolutely love making videos here at Young Nails, so don't be shy, go in the comments, tell us what you want, and we promise we're gonna give it to you. Also, don't forget to subscribe.